Hi, my name is Carl Young and I'm an English educator at North Carolina State University. In this video, I'm going to discuss poetry and present a framework that will be helpful in terms of reading, discussing, and understanding poetry more effectively. This is a framework that's also helpful in terms of writing poetry as well. All too often in English language arts classes, poetry gets short shrift. If it's discussed at all, it often gets relegated to canonized poets and poems, poetry types and terms, figurative language, or rhyme scheme. Students often misperceive poetry as a puzzle to be solved, uh, a mystery of sorts, or they see it as a genre uh, that focuses on love or focuses on nature. We want to help students get rid of those stereotypes. And ultimately, students need a framework that helps them better understand poetry and gives them the terms for effectively discussing uh, and analyzing poetry. So, where does this framework come from? And what, what are the characteristics of it? Well, the framework comes from uh, a poet named Gregory Orr, who's also an English professor. Uh, he wrote about these characteristics several years ago. Um, and on the plus side, these characteristics give us the framework for understanding poetry that we're going to talk about today. On the less than positive side, uh, Orr kind of presents these as a way to measure or evaluate or judge poetry, much like the Pritchard scale in the movie Dead Poets Society. In Dead Poets Society, Robin Williams plays uh, a professor named Keating, and Keating has his students rip out the section of their textbook that focuses on the Pritchard scale. So we're going to uh, get rid of the, the way that's used, that idea of uh, judging or evaluating poems. But we want to keep the key ideas because they do key, give us a good way for how to understand, discuss, analyze poetry. So what are these four characteristics? They are as follows. Story. Structure, music, and imagination. Story, of course, is the way that uh, a, a, a poet conceives of giving a message. So it's the story or the message that a poet is trying to convey. Structure is the way that a poem is put together. And a poem can be put together many different ways. It might be highly structured, as in a, a prescribed and definite form or rhyme scheme. Or it might be open-ended, have blank verse or free verse as the guiding structure. Sometimes poets use a narrative form, stream of consciousness, um, and prose. Or it might be uh, stanzas that are fixed um, and, and very structured. Music is the way that a poem sounds when it's read aloud. Poetry is a genre that's meant to be heard and performed. So we want to consider the ways in which a poet uses features and characteristics that give uh, poems their sound, the way that they're, they're meant to be read and heard. Last but not least, we have imagination. Imagination is the creative component uh, of a poem. And poets really conceive of this in, in a couple of different ways. Ultimately, it's the way that a poet helps us to see the world in new and compelling ways. One way a poet could do this is by taking something that is familiar to us, maybe even mundane, something that we take for granted, and, and the poet helps us to see it in new and compelling ways. Another way that a poet could do this is by taking something that is more abstract or complex, hard to understand, and the poet gives us the terms through a poem of seeing it in a new way that we can understand it better and maybe on a deeper level. So we have our four characteristics, but before we end, I want to talk about the relationship between these, because I think that is a very important thing to consider when we think about understanding poetry. The habits of mind that are involved in story and structure are very different than the habits of mind that are involved in music and imagination. Story and structure involved imposing boundaries and parameters on our thinking and kind of closing down on ideas. Music and imagination 
do the opposite somewhat. They kind of push against boundaries. They are freeing and they are kind of uh, a habit of mind where we're trying to explore possibility. To me, the real power of poetry is when these two different habits of mind are kind of occurring simultaneously. They kind of spark creativity. They are kind of the creative impulse and result of these two habits of mind. That's how we get uh, great poetry. So, today we've talked about a framework for understanding poetry. I hope you find it, I hope you and your students find it helpful uh, in, your, in your English language arts classes and your teaching in the future. And I hope that you'll continue to look for and find ways to incorporate poetry in meaningful ways in your classes in the future. Thank you.